how does a front-wheel drive Maverick handle a serious load? We check out all the features and then put it to the test. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Today we're going to take a look at something new. This is a Ford Maverick. And yeah, we actually have one for the show, so we've done a bunch of videos on the Maverick already. However, this one is an EcoBoost front wheel drive trim. This little mill puts out 250 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque through an 8-speed automatic transmission powering the front wheels. That's a lot of torque through front wheels alone. The EPA rates this setup at 23 miles to the gallon in town and 30 on the highway. Our test vehicle included a number of options, including the Copilot 360 and XLT luxury packages for a total price of $28,540, including destination and delivery. Of course, towing capacity is very important on any truck, even a compact one. This one, because it is front wheel drive, can only tow up to 2,000 pounds. Equip it with all wheel drive and you can tow up to 4,000. Our test truck has a lined bed plus AC power, a bed light, and adjustable rails. Under the second row is a storage bin. Fold the seats back down. And I fit just fine. I have room for my knees thanks to a cutout in the back seat. Um, it is a little tight for my arm here, but I got lots of headroom. Now this seat is where I would be positioned if I were driving right now. I'm six foot one, legs torso proportionate, and this is actually pretty good. Down here I have USB-A as well as a USB-C in addition to an AC socket and that little notch right there is to 3D print accessories. If I want to put extra cup holders or a phone holder, I can put those back here. And then over here I have a fold-down armrest with integrated cup holders. Back here, the Lariat gets a fancy power one, but this one is just a manual sliding window. On the inside, it looks really very similar to our Lariat that we own for the show. Uh, we have the same kind of recycled plastics and kind of a really cool iceberg pattern. Uh, we have the accent colors, although the accent colors here are orange to match the exterior better. Uh, and just a really nice open airy space. Now granted, you could complain it's a little on the cheap side in terms of plastics. Uh, it feels very solid and it just seems very functional. I mean, I really like this interior. Uh, let's go ahead and start it up, and yeah, XLT trims, get a key. Push button start is on Lariat. The gauge cluster here is simplified versus what's in our Lariat. Uh, it has, of course, attack on the left, speed on the right, but it has a really small little digital display in the middle. Um, but that does give me lots of useful information. I have uh, my MPGs, a Speedo, I have the advanced safety stuff, uh, and then as well as music and phone integration. Now, if I go deeper into one of the menus here, I can look at all the driver assistance functions that come on this XLT that we have. It comes with blind spot warning, pre-collision assist, lane keep assist, driver sway alerts, cross traffic alert for rear backing up, and trailer sway control. Now, one thing that is missing is adaptive cruise control. This one only has traditional cruise control. If you want adaptive, you have to either I think you have to either add a package um, or it comes standard on Lariat. So even though this vehicle does cost $7,000 less than our fully loaded Lariat FX4, um, you do get some you know, very useful features for that money. In addition to all wheel drive, in addition to the skid plates and off-road modes, uh, our Lariat also of course has adaptive cruise control. Over here, uh, core functionality is close to the same. We have terrestrial radio, phone integration, apps, and settings. Most importantly, it is used as a backup camera, and it's the same backup camera as in our Lariat, at least it vaguely, eh, maybe it's a little mushier, 
one thing I do really like about the Maverick here is that they didn't rely on the screen for everything. Uh, moving on down, we have Aircon, and it is only single zone at this price point, but I do have a heated steering wheel and three stages of heat on the two front seats. Um, I also get a USB-C power socket as well as a USB-A power socket. Now, in our Lariat, we have wireless charging down here. This one does not have it, but, you know, the Maverick doesn't have wireless CarPlay anyway, so I think that's probably okay. Plugging in, there we go. And you will see our display then turns into a CarPlay interface. Come on, there we go. Boom, and there we go, CarPlay. Very easy, nice, good-looking screen uh, for the price point. Moving on down, we have the controller for the 8-speed automatic, which also has a L setting uh, if you need to keep it in the lower gears. Uh, and then we also have a number of drive modes. Now the drive modes are different here than in our Lariat because with the FX4 you get off-road modes, this one doesn't have that. Instead we get normal, tow haul, slippery, eco, and sport. Now what those do is they adjust both the braking systems as well as the transmission uh, and the throttle to basically optimize the vehicle for certain uses. Uh, we're going to test a couple of them today in this review a little bit later. We can also turn on and off the auto start and traction control is a push button away as well. Now the seats here are very comfortable. I actually rather like them. They are cut in a very similar way as our Lariat, but where our Lariat has synthetic leather, these are really nice and they hold me very well in my seat position. Um, I have a lot of power adjustments on the side here. Yes. Uh, the passenger side does not have power adjustments though. It is just physical levers. This review started out in fair weather, now the rain is here. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna drive around and give you some general thoughts about the Maverick Front Wheel Drive XLT. And then I'm gonna go buy some rocks and we're gonna load up the tailgate here with weight. Now that can handle up to 1,500 pounds of cargo. We're probably not gonna load quite that much, but first we're gonna go do a zero to 60 with nothing else in the vehicle. And then we're gonna do it again with a payload and see how that changes the dynamics. I'm gonna go ahead and switch into sport. Even though wide open throttle usually is maximum outside of any drive modes, I'm still gonna put it into sport just so nobody can say I didn't give it a fighting chance. Okay, complete stop here. Three, two, one, and go! Full throttle. Ah, skippity doo And the uh, torque steer is very well controlled though. Woo, and that really scoots at 60. 7.35 seconds. That is with no load, as it is single driver. No passenger. This does have a towing capacity of 2,000 pounds. The tow package on an all-wheel drive model, however, gets you towing up to 4,000 pounds. So clearly, towing is not the main point of this vehicle. However, both of them have a payload capacity of 1,500 pounds. How much does that equal in large rocks? Well, we're gonna find out in just a little bit. Few general thoughts about this vehicle. I do like my Lariat much better. The seats are a little more comfortable. Uh, the gauge cluster just looks better. Just overall, it just has some nicer stuff going on. And considering, you know, that I paid about seven grand more, it does have the FX4 off-road package. It has all wheel drive and it has a nicer interior. I think those things are worth the extra money. Um, something that is consistent among all Mavericks I've driven, there are a few little bits and pieces that are you know, a little on the cheap side and they're not really aligned very well. There's a little split at the bottom of this little piece. There's also, like on my Lariat, the speaker grill up in the front isn't exactly level. Um, so just some little things like that. Does it make it a deal killer? No, certainly not. Okay, well, we've now tested the Zerta 60. Let's go pick up some rocks and see how this thing deals with a payload. Ah! 
I think that'll fit. So we measured this out. It is um, roughly a 42 inch pallet is as big as we can get. Some of these are 44s, but this one is about a 40. So we should fit it just fine. Now I just have to stack all these on this pallet. So this stuff sells by the half ton. And given that this truck can take up to 1,500 pounds, um, we're not going to do a full 1,500, but maybe we'll get close to eight. Then after we load this up, we'll try again and see how uh, the zero to 60 respond and how handling is affected. Specifically, since this is a front wheel drive, which is usually not ideal for big payloads. Was that like that much sag? <laughs> Thank you. So here we are with a thousand pounds of rock, actually a little bit more than a thousand pounds in the back of the Maverick. Now it does have a total capacity of 1500 pounds, but I weigh a little bit over 200. Nick's probably close to 200. And we now have to go drive this to location. So I didn't want to like totally max this thing out. Okay, this thing now has slightly more than a thousand pounds in the back. Let's see how it does with handling. And I do feel like my nose is pointing up. Okay, this will be weird. Obviously, I'm feeling the weight here. However, with the 250 horsepower EcoBoost motor, it's not slow. I can still accelerate at a reasonable rate here. I just don't want to be too aggressive because I don't want rocks to be tumbling around in the back of the truck. Um, clearly, my nose is pointing up a little bit. I think the back sagged a couple inches, at least. Um, so I'm pointing upwards, but it's, it's not uncomfortable to do. I mean, somebody who just wants to haul a thousand pounds of rock, yeah, they, you have no problem doing this. So if you were to get this truck, I mean, this is kind of the stuff you would do. You would go down to a rockery and pick up, you know, a pallet of rocks for your, for your driveway or maybe some dirt. I mean, this is like a gardener slash adventurer vehicle. It is not designed for massive hauling duties. However, as you can see, a thousand pounds, totally doable. So I have done maximum capacity loads on like an old S10 and stuff like that. That felt dangerous. This doesn't. This feels totally comfortable and doable. I still, you know, the, the handling is a little weird now um, with all the weight in the back and the front wheels, eh, the steering's a little vague. <laughs> also, it really does wallow a lot more in the corners because it's really thrown off all the driving dynamics. But obviously this is not what you're gonna be driving every day. This is a special case scenario. How wet is it? Yeah, yeah, the road is completely covered in water. But I know this road and I know it covers with water all the time, so I'm not too worried about crossing it here. Hopefully not famous last words. Now that we loaded up a thousand pounds, let's see what this does on a zero to 60. Now I'm gonna be in sport mode again, like before, and I'm just gonna mosh it. Three, two, one, go! Oh, even more wheel spin. Lots of wheel spin and it's, oh boy, it's kind of hunting all over the place here. Yeah, that's sketchy and 9.63 seconds. So are you ever gonna do zero to 60 with a load of a thousand pounds in the back? Probably not. But now we know something more than we knew before. Performance really isn't hit that badly. I mean, all things considered, this is a small truck. Also, steering, super sketchy. <laughs> at the, when you're accelerating, plus you have the load, the front tires have nothing to do. It's just, yeah, not, not something I, I really wanna ever do again. So there's that. I'm going to switch to tow haul mode. And the reason for that 
is the way that it controls specific, specifically compression braking is very good. Because I have no means of controlling my transmission, there's no paddle shifters, there's not even like a manual override of any kind, I have to rely on the programs. And the programs actually do a pretty good job. I mean, Sport is way more aggressive, Eco kind of is more lax with the throttle, uh, but Tow Hall is very aggressive with the compression braking. Uh, that way you don't wear out your brake pads and you also get basically a brake boost whenever you let off the throttle. As I slow down here, it should be way more aggressive with that downshift. Yeah, there we go. So it's using the compression of the engine to help with braking, which is nice. It's exactly what you want to do. Also, you know, the brakes on Fords in general these days are pretty touchy. Um, by amping up that compression braking, it's kind of smoothing that out a little bit. So like any truck, once you load it down with a thousand pounds in the back, it is going to affect the handling. Um, I definitely, my nose is higher, my all the weights over the back axle, uh, which definitely <laughs> makes it a little sketchier as far as steering input is concerned. And it's even worse because we have just all this rain. So on the highway, hydroplaning, much more of an issue. Um, also just keeping the vehicle straight when going through a lot of like puddles at speed, it could just basically make handling more complicated. Um, and that is not unique to the Maverick. Any smaller or mid-sized truck is gonna potentially have that problem. And I think that this one actually does a pretty good job, all things considered here. Now, if you want to avoid that issue altogether, just get a bigger truck. An F-150 or a Tundra isn't gonna be as affected by a thousand pounds as say a Toyota Tacoma um, or this Maverick. So would I haul a thousand pounds in this vehicle without worry? Yeah, it's actually really easy to do and it works fine. Again, this is a very useful little truck and a lot of people say you can't do anything with a four and a half foot bed. I would disagree. I'm hauling a thousand pounds. I wouldn't do that with, well, any crossover really and I definitely wouldn't do it with any car. So right there, that's a win for a small truck. So of course I have these rocks, now I need to get them back to our property on the other side of the mountains. So I handed the keys off to Nick and he found a big issue with driving a front wheel drive truck onto rural property. Even on level surfaces, mud can be a major problem. Forget climbing the hill, this is where the rocks will have to be dropped. Though the front wheel drive Maverick is quite capable of taking on a good sized load, it's not ideal. The front wheel drive setup can cause handling and capability issues that simply aren't as dramatic with the all wheel drive version. If you do plan on using your Maverick like a truck and you want the EcoBoost engine, get the all wheel drive. You'll be glad you did. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share, and like our videos. We make them for you, and I hope you enjoy them.